Believe it or not, I came into tech with a neuroscience and health policy background, and in under a year, I was able to pick up a data skill set and join a data team at a major tech company. I guess, I just, I just don't understand why you, you, anyone who uses spaces over tabs. And then take that skill set to join a data science team at a startup. In this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly how I did it. A quick disclaimer before we get into this video, I do wanna say that this was by no means an overnight success and it took a lot of extra work, you know, staying late at work, picking up projects, doing things on the weekend when others were doing other things. I'm seeing a lot of content on YouTube sometimes that says, you know, you can become an engineer in like a few months or you can get into data in a few months. And, you know, I think the realistic thing is that anything that's good and worth it is gonna take a lot of time and hard work. So this is my story and I'm sharing it with you to help out and give value and, you know, just like give people resources that they may not have. But by no means is it a quick thing or an overnight success. You really do have to put in the work um, to actually get all of this done. All right, I gotta get the practice. So with that said, we're gonna dive into the way I got into the data space. I'm gonna walk you through all the steps that I took and at the end of each section, I'm gonna give you some key points and takeaways that you can actually walk away with from this video and actually apply to your own journey as you try to pursue a data job in the tech space. And if you're interested, at the end of the video, I am gonna walk through some of my income and how that kind of progressed through my time in data. So be sure to stick around for that. So the very first thing you need to do is actually set a goal for yourself and figure out what you want to do. I joined a large tech company in San Francisco out of college. I was studying neuroscience and health policy. I didn't have a tech background or an engineering background at all. I was fortunate enough that this company had a rotation program, but that focused mostly on sales and user operations. And I knew that those things weren't really the things that I was interested in, but it was my way to get into the tech world itself. So when I got to the company, I looked around, I looked at all the different roles, and I kind of tried to pick where I would want to see myself in the future. And for me, that was data. I knew I already liked working with numbers, and I liked the fact that you can actually use numbers not only to tell a story and what's going on in the business, but that those things can then be translated to actual strategy and actual action items that different teams around the business could focus on. So you would have a lot of impact just going through the numbers, providing a story, and driving tangible value. I also liked that a lot of people on the data side of things didn't really feel like they had to own the center of the stage all the time. I saw this a lot in operations and in sales, but with data, you could really let the numbers talk for you. And if you did wanna go up there and present and be a part of everything, you had that option. So it was really giving me that flexibility. So with all of those things in mind, I was set on picking data as my goal and getting into that side of tech. So to summarize this section and give you a key point, the first thing you need to do is set a concrete goal for yourself. This doesn't have to be something super specific. It just has to be kind of a guiding light to give you a picture and an understanding of what you want to actually get into. All right, so now that I had a goal and I knew I wanted to get into data, I actually had to figure out what I needed to learn to get me there. I knew the world of data was a really large one and that I couldn't learn everything all at once, but I wanted to figure out what are the lowest hanging fruits that I can reach out for and actually learn those things so that I can have impact in my industry. And for me, that came down to first and foremost learning SQL. And I think this is a totally valuable skill set that a lot of people overlook because SQL is not your traditional programming language, but I think it's something really useful and valuable. I saw on the user operations and sales sides of things that there was a huge need for people who actually understood SQL and could work with databases. This would help with things like pulling reports and providing insightful things that the team could actually act on and move forward with. SQL also seemed like something that was a very easy to achieve starting goal. I wasn't trying to just go, you know, learn the hardest thing I could possibly learn. I knew that SQL was a stepping stone into getting into the data space. And so for me, it was really trying to get a core foundation of what are the key elements of things that you need to know to actually work with data. And SQL was my first pathway to do that. Although SQL was great, I knew that it wasn't enough and I knew that I needed additional skills to actually get into the data world. I didn't want to become a software engineer by any means, but I knew that there was a benefit to actually learning the foundations of programming and how computers worked. So with that goal, I understood that I also had to figure out and learn a programming language in addition to SQL and kind of have those two things come together so that I could actually get into the world of data science. In order to decide which language I wanted to focus on, it actually was really easy for me because the company that I was working at was a really big Python shop. So the decision was kind of made for me that I would learn Python. And on top of this, the world of data and data science is really focused on the Python programming language as their kind of core language. So this kind of worked in my favor. So at the end of all of this, you know, I'm still working in sales, I'm still working in user operations, but I have a plan and a framework in mind on how to achieve that plan. I knew that I wanted to get into data and I knew that my pathway to do that was to learn both SQL and Python. And those would be the tangible skills that I could take with me to enter the next phase and enter the data science space that I wanted to be a part of. So the key point for this section is for whatever goal you had picked earlier, you really want to focus in and figure out the tangible things that you need to do to actually achieve that goal. In the case of data science or programming, it's a little bit easier because it's essentially the language or the stack that you need to learn to get there. 
The big thing here is that once you pick those things that you need to do, do not deviate from them. It's really easy to you know lose track and try to jump from language to language. But once you pick a couple of things, focus in on them and get really good at them. And that's what's actually gonna help you over time because your skills are gonna compound. All right, so at this point, I have picked a goal. I've picked you know the tools that I need to actually get that goal. The next step is kind of the meat and potatoes of the whole operation is how do I actually learn the things that I wanna do? So for this step, it's really about finding the right resources and tools that you need to actually learn Learn a specific skill set. For my side, I knew I was splitting up in between SQL and Python. For SQL, I actually started with relatively simple tools. I focused on Code Academy just to learn the basics. And I was a little bit fortunate that the company that I worked with had a SQL bootcamp where you could really walk through exercises and curriculum that had been set up by the data analysts and the data science team at the company. And just to gain a foundational knowledge of how SQL works. Along with this, what I did that I thought was super helpful and super underrated was I found a group of people that were trying to pursue the same type of goal that I was. At our company, you know, there were a few people that wanted to get into the data space. And so we all sat together and worked together a lot of times after hours on going through the SQL problems or going through specific concepts that we got stuck on or working through bugs that we all kind of came across. And this was really helpful because it helped me find a group of people that were pursuing the same thing as me, but it also helped me find people that were maybe slightly farther in the route than I was. And I could rely on them and see them as a beacon of where I wanted to get to. And in those times where motivation is lacking, I think this is so huge because when you see other people working towards a goal that you're also interested in, it kind of drives you further to do those things. And so that's why it was really important for me to find a good community of people that I could rely on as I pursued this goal of learning SQL. To learn more Python, I actually did two specific things. I picked up a copy of the book, Learn Python the Hard Way, and I literally just went through it with a friend. And we did all the exercises that we could just to get a basic understanding of how Python worked. And then secondarily, I took some additional courses and classes on the platform called Treehouse, which is another kind of online learning platform where you can learn Python. The goal of all of this wasn't to become, you know, a guru in either of these languages, SQL or Python. It was really to get a foundational understanding of both things so that I could then utilize them to actually, you know, do projects and um, apply them in wherever I could find a place to apply them in. So the key point for this section is to really find two or three resources that you can rely on and just stick to those. You want to make sure that they're the right medium of how you learn in terms of you know text or video. And once you pick two or three resources, just stick to them and go through them in their entirety. Again, try not to jump between resource to resource because you're really gonna keep starting at the beginning where you know it's better to keep going deeper into one resource and extract all the value that you can out of it. And the second takeaway from this section was to really find a group of people that can push you to achieve your goals. This can be an online group. You know, I was a little fortunate that I worked at a company that had people around me, but a lot of times you can find communities and organizations online, join discords, join Slack groups, and to really just find a community around you that's gonna push you to actually achieve that goal, especially in those moments when you don't really want to, because it will happen. Okay, so now I'm at the point where I've picked a goal, I know the framework and the resources that I need to pick, I've figured out those resources, I'm learning the language, and I really have a foundational understanding of both SQL and Python. The next step is the biggest step, and that's to actually take what you know and apply it to projects. I cannot stress this enough, you're never gonna feel like you're ready to do projects because you're always gonna feel like you wanna keep learning and keep doing courses or keep following tutorials. You don't wanna get stuck in that mindset. You really wanna take what you know and apply it to a project. For me, this was a little bit easier again because I worked at a company. So what I did was within my team, if there was ever a data project that needed to be done, I would volunteer to do that. In addition to that, I also went to other teams around the company that I knew didn't have the data resources or weren't backed by a data team specifically, but they had needs. And I kind of reached out and was proactive and I said, you know, oh, you need this, I can do this for you. That kind of helped me with two things. One, it put me on a deadline to actually get a project done and complete. And two, it put me in a place where I was actually creating something and driving value for a specific team. There's a huge benefit to actually building something or creating something that's actually used by someone else because it makes you feel like, you know, the things that you had to offer were actually valuable. And that kind of reinforces the whole pattern of continuous learning and continuously doing projects. So I really stress highly to find a few different projects and really put in the skills that you've attained into these projects because that's that's the only way you're gonna actually keep learning and find the knowledge gaps in what you don't know and then learn those things as well. If you're not in a company like me, there's no reason why you also can't do projects. You can find things online on websites like Kaggle, or you know, even if you just YouTube, just basic beginner data projects, there's so many different types of tutorials out there put in by the data science community that you can work on. Of course, it's a little bit more helpful if those things are being used by other groups or other people. So if you can find that opportunity, or if you can find a way just to reach out to another company or whoever you may look up to and say, hey, I saw this about you and I kind of wanted to dig a little deeper. Can I do some analytics work for you? 
Of course, that takes a little bit more skill and strategy to actually get those things done. But the biggest takeaway here is to just apply your learnings into an actual project. All right, so at this point, I've really put in the work. I've kind of figured out my goal. I've figured out my tech stack. I've learned the foundations. I've done projects. This has been a lot of time and energy. You know, this was all under a year, but it was under a year of working additional hours, overtime, and just kind of on my own time to, to do these additional projects that were valuable to me. The next big step was to actually apply for a job, and I extremely stress that you should apply for a job even when you don't feel ready for it. And the reason I say that is because you're never gonna feel like you're ready. Just like you were never feeling ready that you could do projects, you're never gonna feel like you actually have the skills needed to potentially do this for a job for a specific company or a group. And so I think that that's important for two reasons. One, even if you get rejected, interviewing is a skill and going through that process of job searching and interviewing is only gonna teach you better to get better at that skill so that you can present yourselves in the way that these companies are looking for. And secondly, when you get rejected or if you get rejected, it's gonna show you the holes in your knowledge and that's only gonna make you, you know, go back and figure out those things that you don't know or do additional projects that kind of fill in those gaps. So I think at this point, you know, it's really helpful to, you know, figure out the domain that you're actually in interested in and then apply to those jobs because applying to jobs is also part of the process and then hopefully you know as you keep going through this process you'll actually be able to land a job and then that's going to take you a whole other step further because you're going to be in the exact ecosystem you want to be with and you're going to be able to dedicate so much more time to it rather than just learning all this on the side when you're working on something else full time. So the key takeaway from this section is that you're never going to feel 100% ready to apply for a job but you should do it anyways because that's the only way that you're actually going to get fully immersed in the data field that you actually want to be a part of. All right, so now I have a job in the data space. This is kind of exactly what I wanted. So we're done, right? That's it. No, that is not it. Um, you know, the data space and the engineering space, the programming space, there's so much to learn that you're never gonna be able to learn it all. And so even as you have a job, it's actually a better environment for you to keep learning and not only keep learning, but to add additional skills to your skill set and your toolkit so that you can, you know, take those things along in your career and grow as a programmer or as a data scientist or whatever kind of field you're pursuing. So for me, after I left my first job, I actually took my data skill set to work at a startup on a data team there. And there I kind of wanted to add additional skills to my skill set. I knew I already had a basic understanding of SQL, a basic understanding of Python, but those were mostly for data things. I'd never done things like build web apps or learned a little bit of web development and how those things worked. And so what I did at this new job was I kept learning things. And for me specifically, that was learning web development using Python. So I learned things like Flask. I learned how to build small web apps. And again, what I was doing in those cases was I was kind of walking through the same steps that I took earlier, where I created a plan for myself. I found the tools and resources I needed to learn. I learned the foundational skills. And the biggest thing was I found internal projects at my company where I could, you know, build small apps for our internal teams. I knew I wasn't an engineer and I knew no one was going to let me actually commit code to production, but I knew that I could build little apps that our teams could use and that would give me enough knowledge to apply what I was learning into an actual usable thing and then get feedback from users so I could continue to get better. So the big thing here and the key point that I want you to take away is even once you have a job, it's not the end of your journey. It's actually only the beginning of your journey and you should keep learning and keep adding to your toolkit because that is what's going to make you kind of a complete programmer or a complete data scientist or whatever field that you choose in this technical space and that's only going to make you even more marketable and do cooler things that you want to do in the future. All right so that's my story those are all the things that I did to move into the tech space coming from a very non-tech background and how I've kind of been pursuing um, doing data over time. I did want to touch a little bit about income because I know I said that at the earlier video and by no means is this kind of like industry standard this was just kind of what I experienced so take it with a grain of salt but I do think it's important just to give transparency on you know what uh, income can look like in the data space. So for reference, when I started at my very first job in the rotation program, a non-data role, I was making $60,000 living in San Francisco. And when I switched to a data team, I was making $75,000 in kind of an analyst role. And that was kind of the lowest level that I came in with, but it was a huge raise for me. And I was really excited about it. After I left that company, I went to a different company. And a lot of times getting a larger salary bump is helpful by switching companies because you can kind of start at a higher bracket. And so coming in, I knew I didn't want to go become a full data scientist because I didn't have that skill set, but I knew I had an operations background, I had a data skill set, and I could kind of do a lot of different things. Um, so I came into a data operations type of role where I was doing a lot of data stuff, some operations stuff, some like 
uh, program management stuff and kind of a combined role. And in that role, I was making $110,000. All these salaries are you know, without stock, so it's an additional stock on top of that and benefits. And I kind of quickly progressed in that role and was promoted to you know, manager and senior manager. And by the time I left that company, I was making $140,000 um, plus stock and benefits and all of those things. So again, this was all actually over four years. Um, you know, I learned all the data stuff in within a year. And then over the next three years, I was able to kind of go up to at least $140,000. If I had stayed longer, um, I would have probably you know, continued to go up. But um, you know, I didn't do that. So that's kind of all to say, not to like brag or boast, but really to show you that if you're actually interested in the data space, you can come in with no background at all, really put in the time and the effort and the work. And over time, it's going to be worth it in terms of like the stuff that you get to do, the things that you learn, but also monetarily, it's a good profession and a good kind of thing to, to do for compensation um, if that's something that also drives you. So um, that was kind of all the things that I had to share today. I really hope that this video is valuable to people. If you have your own experiences or if you have tips or things like that that I didn't touch upon, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. If you have questions for me, I'd also love to hear those in the comments below. Um, and of course now I'm kind of on a web dev uh, journey and that's what this channel is about, um, but I'm still kind of dabbling in data stuff. So if you want to follow along that journey uh, and kind of see how I do, um, definitely hit the subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.